Welcome back. This is MacMaster4848 here, and in this episode of the Tech Dictionary, you'll learn about the commonly used and essential aspects of the internet, websites. Introduction. When browsing the internet, we use a web browser to view websites. A website is composed of web pages, which are a visual auditory representation of data. This may include information such as text, video, sound, and more. There are many websites in existence, at a minimum of 600 million active websites. That is a lot of data. In this video you will find out how websites work, and more. Definition When using the internet, we use software in a computer which communicates via internet protocols. The most commonly used and essential piece of software which uses the internet is a web browser, a program in which you can visit websites in the computer. Examples of web browsers include Firefox, Opera, Safari, and Google Chrome. A website can be defined as a collection of web pages which are made available by an individual, organization, company, etc. Web pages contain information and are generally linked with other web pages, creating a web of data, hence where the name comes from. If we split the word website and look at the definitions of both composing words, you can find a more literal definition. Web can be defined as a complex system of interconnected elements, while a site, in this case, can be defined as something built in a specific place. This is exactly what a website is, a network of information that can be accessed from a specific place, such as a domain name or URL, which is inputted into a web browser, directing the computer to the website's homepage or other pages. Examples of popular websites are Reddit, Twitter, Google, YouTube and Facebook. Websites are generally accessible through a domain name, which is a shortcut to an IP address. How does a website work? Websites are stored on a web server, which is generally owned or hired by the entity who owns or has control over the website. When you attempt to access a website using a URL, either directly or via a link, your web browser makes an HTTP request, asking to be sent the web page from the web server. This is an example of client-side and server-side interaction. It is worth noting that there are server-side actions and client-side actions. When you use a website, your client, the web browser, submits a request data to be sent from the server to your client. This can introduce room for rogue networks to manipulate or listen into data while this is being sent or received. However, it is recommended to use the HTTPS protocol, which encrypts data to prevent this from happening. HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is the main internet protocol for websites, which is the foundation of data communication in the internet. The usage of HTTP involves deciding the actions of web servers and browsers, helping them to communicate and display formatted messages and data. The client-side representation of a website uses HTML and CSS for formatting. HTML, hypertext markup language, is either stored for the website in advance, stored as a cache to make things faster, or processed by the website server to provide information specific to the user. If a website provides a unique experience for each user, this involves processing code such as PHP into HTML each time you request a web page, allowing for user-specific information. This is how websites such as Facebook can cater to specific users by providing systems like user accounts. Your computer displays websites in HTML, but some additional data may require support to other languages such as JavaScript, or web browser extensions such as Adobe Flash. In learning more about web servers and the internet, please click the link on the screen to view the Tech Dictionary episode on the internet. How does one create a website? A website requires three essential components. These are a web server, domain name or IP address or other alternatives, and data to give to your website's viewers in the form of web pages and additional optional media such as photos or videos. A web server can either be run from home, which is not advised to inexperienced people and is generally against the terms of service of ISPs, as allowing people to do so would dramatically increase internet prices, run or using a web server hosted yourself by using a business internet connection or appropriate internet package that allows you to run servers, or directly connecting your web servers to the internet backbone or network. This can be very expensive. Or by using the preferred option by many, use an existing web server host. There are many web servers available to hire on the internet provided by web hosts. These are generally in the form of shared hosting, which involves sharing web server machines with others, but you receive a private area you can upload web pages to. Larger websites may use virtual private servers, dedicated machines, the clouds which can be overpriced, or by connecting many web machines together and distributing the loads across many machines, which is done by the majority of top websites. A domain name can be bought from many services. The most popular choice is a .com domain name. 
There are free alternatives, however these are generally not trusted so cannot be used for businesses or companies. You can use subdomain names or a directory on an existing domain name also. Your web server's IP address can also be used, however this is difficult for people to remember unless you are relying on the use of links for people to find the website. Websites can also be accessed through alternative methods such as the Tor network. Data for the website can be created on an ordinary computer and can be remotely uploaded to a website through the use of a protocol such as FTP or an alternative file sharing method. Websites can be created in HTML or alternative languages and TSS can be used for formatting which can either be stored in a separate file or in the web page file. Browsers understand CSS and perform the formatting options which are stated in CSS code. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the Tech Dictionary. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it informative. You may be interested in seeing the TTT episodes on the internet by clicking on the recommended video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel MacMaster4848 to be notified about future episodes of this and other series.